All right, we're continuing with the teapot, and in this segment of the tutorial, we want to talk about the extrude tool. And we're going to begin to build a spout here. And the extrude tool allows us to take a face uh, or an edge and, and kind of pull it out. If we take that face and pull it out, notice that this face moves. We don't really want to pull this face out, but we want to take that face and pull new geometry out. It's a really neat tool. Uh, and that is this button right here. It's the extrude tool. Or you can go into edit mesh extrude. I'm going to go to the edit mesh extrude and make sure our settings are reset and uh, go ahead and extrude. As we do so, you notice this manipulator changes. Uh, you get this circle, it just looks different from your move scale rotate. Uh, you see this toggle here. By default, that arrow is pointing perpendicular to this face. Notice it's kind of at an angle. Uh, if I take this arrow and pull it, uh, I have a new geometry that's being formed and it's pulling from that face we selected in it, an extrusion. Uh, the further I pull out, uh, based on these angles, this this gets larger. I don't know if you can tell, but uh, this face will get slightly larger the further I pull it out. I'm going to undo that to before the extrude. And I'm going to do the extrude again. And uh, so that's, if I begin, right after I hit the extrude, it's going to play with this object at uh, this perpendicular level. There is a toggle that will switch to world mode, so I can pull uh, this with the axis. So I'm going to do that one for now. Um, I'm going to pull there, and uh, I can hit G and that will allow me to pull again. Um, I'm going to hit the toggle so I can pull out and I can push up and I can even rotate that face. I can begin to scale in. I'll hit G again and uh, I can flatten that face. I can scale it in. So uh, that's how you would begin to uh, create a spout. Now I think uh, we talk about reference material in this class this week and uh, I should have used it. The spout is probably going to be a lot closer to the top um, but that's okay. Um, so a good notice when I begin to select I'm selecting things in the back as well. Uh, a good way to make sure you're selecting the corresponding vertice in the back if, is if I go into a side view here and if I drag I'm, I'm selecting the front one but I'm also selecting the one that you can't see in the back see it you see that I'm going to jump back and I'm just tapping the space bar to go back and forth so I can begin giving shape here so go ahead and play around give your teapot a, a nice shape to the spout here. This is starting to look a little better. And you might want to go ahead and try the front V2. Now this gets tricky because I have the vertices of my main pot. So I'm just trying to scale these in. Uh, so if I start dragging now, I risk hitting these ones of the pot. So uh, I may want to select maybe here and then go to the side view. I'm just kind of looking at how this kind of gradually gets narrower as it comes to the end of the stem. Um, maybe too much. All right, so that's a uh, that's a good start for the the spout here, and now I want to go ahead and show you how you could we can create this spot spout with a curve, 
And the way we would do that, I'm going to jump to the side view, and I'm going to pretend like this is the back. Uh, I'm going to create a curve right here for my spout. And there is a uh, create curve tools. I'm just going to pick a CV curve tool. And I'm going to start right at the surface here. created a curve. Now just as objects have components so do curves I can right click on that curve and uh, move my control vertices around to, to reshape my curve. Uh, the more curves you have the harder it is to get a smooth uh, a line here. But, uh, but you get the idea and I'm starting right at the face And you want these uh, control vertices to be relatively evenly spaced. That, that'll help us out later. All right, so uh, why am I using a curve? That doesn't make sense. So you may be asking, but I can take this face, and one of the options we have with the extrude tools, I can extrude along a path or a curve. So I select the curve, and I... And then I shift select the face. I think it, no, or maybe it's the face and then the curve. And then I go to the extrude option box. And there's an option for a curve selected. So I'm going to reset settings and uh, I can extrude along a curve. So I'm going to go ahead and hit apply. And it took this face and took it to the end of the curve. And you're like, well, that. That wasn't helpful. Why did we go through all that time of manipulating that curve to a nice curve shape if it's just going to have one division? Well, that's because the number of divisions that we set. So we can go into our channel box, and this is the extrude input node, and we can go down, and there's a few attributes. Uh, one is divisions. And as I middle mouse drag, and begin to add divisions you see kind of what's happening here and I can also uh, perform a taper which means as the object gets towards the end it either gets larger or smaller so I'm going to begin to taper that you can also do a twist <laughs> if you really want to but you can do some neat things with this extrude by taking a curve and uh, put it near the face and then extruding along that curve. Now the positioning of those vertices on the curve uh, really are important. Notice how um, like if I put too many subdivisions it gets wonky right here so uh, I'm just gonna try to go in and fix it after the fact but that's that's a quick way of something that you can go ahead and taper and uh, you know follow a curve so we did kind of the same thing in two different ways I want to show you both ways I want to go ahead and uh, once I'm satisfied this I'm not going to use that this input anymore I can go and hit edit delete by type history and then I'll just go and start editing this on a vertice level or component level by tapping coming in here grab this vertex and begin to kind of pull it where I want. I hope this is making sense and I hope this is helpful but so far in this tutorial the, the main two tools that I've gone over have been the insert edge loop and the extrude. And you would be surprised how many things you can build with just those two and the good, the good thing about those two tools they also pervert, preserve your topology uh, which uh, means you have these continuous edges and they're always forming quads uh, assuming you're extruding from a quad um, alright so uh, that's two ways to make your spout uh, 
I'm going to stop here and in the next segment we're going to uh, um, we'll take this handle off the back side and we'll redo a handle using the bridge function. See you in the next video.